From the years of 1939 to 1945, the world was in the depths of the largest and deadliest war in history, World War II. Although this was a time of sorrow and hardship for all involved, one aspect of life left people hopeful and seemed to remove the stress and fears of wartime life, swing music. Swing music offered a retreat for many people during the war, both at home and abroad. However, it had a much larger role than just providing relaxing entertainment. It was also used to inspire and raise the morale of soldiers, and even as a propaganda tool to inspire patriotism among the Allied forces, and dissatisfaction among the Axis forces and civilians within Axis territories. So important to the war effort was swing music, that for many it has become the soundtrack of the war. Before examining the role of swing music in the war efforts, it is important to understand the coming forth and development of swing in its homeland of America. Throughout most of the 1920s, jazz was mostly associated with speakeasies and other less-than-legal establishments. The era of prohibition didn't stop jazz, but it did tend to keep the ensemble small. In one part of America, namely Kansas City, however, Jazz was allowed to flourish due to political corruption that laughed in the face of prohibition. This open market proved to be a great incubator for the birth of swing music. Bands were able to expand and jazz became much more accessible to the public. In this setting, swing music began to evolve and develop as did some of the bands that heralded in the swing era, such as Walter Page's Blue Devils, the Moton Band, and eventually the Count Basie Band. While swing music was in large measure developing in Kansas City, it is important to note that the hot and driving swing music that we think of today still wasn't the mainstream among musicians. While the big band style was developing during the late 1920s and the early 1930s, the birth of the swing era didn't actually occur until 1935 in California. During a cross-country tour that seemed destined to fail, Benny Goodwin and his band played a historic concert at the Palomar Ballroom and it was during this concert that the swing era took off, literally overnight. So, what happened? During this concert, Goodman found a crowd that wanted to hear swing music. This newer style of up-tempo and energetic jazz had generally only been broadcasted during the late night hours in the eastern time zones. However, this meant listeners on the west coast were tuning in during prime time. The crowd wanted to hear what they had listened to on the radio. During the second half of the concert, Goodman and his band got out their hot Fletcher Henderson arrangements, and when they did, a new era in jazz and American culture began. Over the coming years, swing would quickly become the most popular music in America, in addition to becoming a symbol of American ideals such as freedom, unity, and hope. By the time America had gotten involved in the war, swing music was well established as the most popular music in America. Names such as Benny Goodman, Artie Shaw, and Glenn Miller had become household names. As the possibility of being drawn into the conflict in Europe increased, some saw that America's only hope to involve the younger generation was to implement swing music. An article in the Science Newsletter, dated July 15, 1939, stated, American doughboys may march to the next war to swing music, swung off to war, but why? because it will take more sophisticated and streamlined music to get enlistments for another war. The idea that swing music would indefinitely play a role in the war seemed to resound in America, and by this time had already started among other forces engaged in the war. Even during the infant stages of the war, the British Broadcasting Corporation had been broadcasting dance music specifically aimed at raising the morale and energizing soldiers within the British forces, as well as factory workers at home. Swing music's association with the war continued to deepen as well-known musicians and band leaders were drafted or enlisted. In 1942, during the height of the war, the popular band leader Artie Shaw disbanded his group and joined the Navy, where he directed a Navy band, boosting morale and support among his fellow soldiers. Perhaps best known for his efforts in spreading swing music during the war was Glenn Miller, in 1942, Miller enlisted in the U.S. Army Air Force, leaving behind a career as the most successful band leader in America. But joining the Air Force did not end that career. According to a biography of Glenn Miller, during the two years that it was under his direction, the Army Air Force Band performed over 800 times, 
with at least 300 live performances. Miller not only contributed to the spreading of swing music during the war, but he also contributed to it gaining a patriotic side. His swing arrangement of American Patrol, which incorporated themes that are strikingly patriotic, is a great example of how swing music was used to boost patriotism both on the front and at home. Music such as this provided troops and civilians with a chance to think about something other than the hardships of war. It shifted their thoughts instead to the joy of the American lifestyle. It is important to note that the Allied forces were not the only ones who were listening to swing music during the war. Just as jazz music was popular among youth in America and Britain, into the early 1930s it was gaining a great deal of popularity among German youth. The American ideals that were associated with jazz and swing were a problem for the ideals of Nazi Germany. Not to mention, jazz was seen by the Nazi party as a Judeo-Negroid form of music. In fact, the spread of jazz was becoming such a worry for Nazi Germany that when Hitler came to power in 1933, the new government's broadcasting authority banished jazz from German airwaves. However, actually removing jazz from the airwaves was much more difficult. Nazi officials struggled for years to determine what could be considered jazz, not to mention how to remove it from the airwaves while still retaining listeners. And there was the ever-present problem that it was just as easy for listeners to tune into British or American radio broadcasts and potentially be exposed to anti-Nazi propaganda. While Nazi Germany was engaging in physical and ideological warfare, they were also engaged in a warfare with jazz. However, it is important to realize that they understood the popularity of jazz among the Allied forces, and although they did not want it influencing their forces or civilians, the Nazi forces did want to keep Germans from listening to the American or British stations, and they did see potential to use swing as propaganda against the Allied forces. In 2003, Proper Records released a four-CD set entitled Swing Tausend Verboten, Swing Music and Nazi Propaganda Swing During World War II, that was recorded from 1937 to 1944, and contained various attempts at creating a distinct style of German swing, as well as Nazi renditions of popular swing music with different lyrics that would have been broadcasted over the airways of Allied forces as propaganda. One such song was a rendition that was based off of the popular song You're Driving Me Crazy by Walter Donaldson, in which the lyrics were changed in the second verse to act as propaganda and poke fun at Winston Churchill. While not much is known about how it actually was used during the war, it does provide interesting evidence into the attempts of Nazi Germany to utilize swing music for its war efforts. Clearly, swing music proved to be a weapon for both sides of the war. While swing music may not have defined the war, it did define an era, and for many, it was the music of choice to unwind and remove the hardships associated with war. During this era, jazz was, for the first time in history, the most popular and widely listened to music in America. However, while swing music may have contributed to the success of the war, the war may also have contributed to the ending of the swing era. The war took away some of the great players and band leaders, some of which would never return. Especially having lost its most popular and well-known band leader, Glenn Miller, swing and the swing era began to lose popularity following the war. During the war, bands had to downsize due to difficult economic sanctions that made the idea of a big band difficult to pursue, and following the war, many never took on the big band again. Perhaps it could be said that swing music was another sacrifice of the war. Either way, swing music is likely to always be established in the minds of many as the soundtrack of World War II.